Just a one, two, one, two. I got something I want to tell you about yourself. <laughs> Creator's guarantee. 
under the laws of God. You can never lose under the laws of God. No matter what you believe, but we keep on singing. I keep on singing. There's a part of me that keeps on singing the blues. Do you have a part of you that keeps on singing the blues? I know, I know, I know you don't. Everybody but you. Right? <laughs> Thank you for dropping in from heaven, you angel, to bless us with your real presence. I appreciate that. We are going to remember we don't have to believe these ideas. We don't have to welcome or accept these ideas. Some of these ideas are going to be hard to believe, and some of these ideas are going to be quite startling. You're not asked to judge or analyze the ideas at all. If you use the ideas, you'll see that the ideas are true and that they work. If you use them, you will see that it works. If you use it, you will see that it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how many of you believe you've ever been hurt by love? That you love somebody and that you got hurt? Hey, I mean, too. Anybody in here ever appeared to lose? somebody you love? That ever happened that that appeared? Okay. Have you ever been in any kind of relationship where it looks like someone gave you love and then they took it back? <laughs> <laughs> ever. Ever. Uh, a brother said just this morning. <laughs> well today I'm going to talk about love. Of course in miracles talking about love. And uh, it's on in the workbook, it's uh, page 230. There is no love but God's. There is no love but God's. Thank you for coming online. Thank you, Myrna and Gary and Lori and Asetta and Scott and Barbara. Uh, we have, what do you know tonight? We have a, a very large enthusiastic online community of mighty companions Yay. that are uh, some reason the way that the, the, the spirit of God comes through me is helpful to them and I feel like yours, yours is helpful to me and I hope mine is helpful to you perhaps you think there are different, kind, there are different kinds of love are possible Perhaps you think there's a kind of love for this and a kind of love for that. You may think there's a way of loving one person or one thing and another way of loving another. You know, uh, I think there's a way of loving my child, but another way of loving my friend is another way of loving. I think there's one way of loving one person and one way of loving another. I think different kinds of love are possible. Do you think the different kinds of love are possible according to what we learn? Um, Love is one. Now what does that mean? What does that mean? It means that love doesn't have any separate parts. Mm. Do, do you, sometimes I see separate parts. I think I love. The important ones. You only love the important ones. Yeah, yeah. There you go, yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It says love doesn't have any degrees, love doesn't have any kinds, love doesn't have any levels, love doesn't have any divergences, and love doesn't have any distinctions. Love is like love, and that means love is unchanged throughout, which means real love never alters with a person or a circumstance. It's the heart of God, it's also your heart. Hmm. 
The meaning of love is obscure to anyone who thinks that love can change, which is another way of saying anyone that thinks love can change, the meaning of love is hidden to that person. So anytime you talk to anybody and they think love can change, then they don't really know the meaning of love. A person who has the meaning of love hidden from them doesn't see that it's impossible that love changes. And so that person thinks they can love somebody at times, hate somebody at other times, and think they can give their love to one person and yet remain itself although it's withheld from others. To believe these things of love is not to understand love. To believe what things of love? To believe that you can love somebody sometimes, hates people at another time, think that you can give your love to one person, and yet uh, remain itself even though you withhold it from somebody else. Anybody who believes that uh, of love is not to understand it. And if it could make such distinctions, love would have to judge between the righteous and the sinner, and perceive the child of God in separate parts. Um, if I'm going to choose who to love, then I got to judge you. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. If, I, if I'm going to, if I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to give you love, I got to judge. And uh, any any questions about? Okay. So this is where I do when I'm studying the course. So I give I give myself the test so I can get out of denial. And it, and it would go something like this. Okay, do I think, if I be honest with myself and not just try to be spiritual, <laughs> even though it's not really true, uh, I would say to myself, do I think love changes? Yeah, <clears throat> I think love changes. Um, do I think I can love at some times and hate at some times? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do I think I can give love to one person and not give love to another person? Yes. So, guess what? I'm one the person that he says the meaning of love is hidden. I'm the person who doesn't really know what love is. I'm the person that doesn't know what love means. Am I alone? No. So we've got a room full of people who don't know what love means being shocked when they don't get along. <laughs> As I said it again, by our own admission, based on this definition, by our own admission, based on this definition, that's good, that's right, uh, then we don't know what love is. So, if I know you don't know what love is, and I don't know what love is, would I be more forgiving of your so-called errors? Yeah, yeah. So if, I, so if we were to tell ourselves the truth, which is that we're a group of people who don't really know what love means, then we would not have grievances the way we have grievances when we're with other people who don't know what love means either. <laughs> but we want to. But we want to know what love means, but we won't get to the point that we do know what love means until we really are willing to do two things. Admit that we don't know what love means and be willing to listen what, to what love means. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, so, are there any questions or comments about the first two paragraphs? This is a deep section. I was saying earlier that um, any way that you respond to it is okay. You know, because the Course in Miracles itself says that when we're confronted directly with the truth, that our mind gives us three, three uh, gives us advice, three kinds of advice. It says, go to sleep. Okay, okay. Uh, forget what you just heard. I went to the course, but I don't remember what he said. And when somebody asked me about what he said, when I'm trying to get them to come to the class, I just tell them, you just need to come. <laughs> right? And the last advice that the ego gives us, go to sleep, forget it, or die. <laughs> okay. So, when, if you go to sleep, I understand. Okay. Um, but I want. I'm tired of being hurt by what I've been calling love, and I'm tired of being hurt by what other people call love. So I'm, I've had it. Okay. So I know if I really had it, I'll be willing to admit and tell the truth to myself. Okay. So I'm going to tell you all, I didn't pass that test. All right? 
Go out with me at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, bro, I do want to make a comment. Okay. I just want to say it's so profound when we read these lessons together because to me that's crystal clear. But then when I try to read it on my own, it's like I'm reading Chinese or something. Mm -hmm. like, okay. Yeah, but, but that's a very good point, Chris, because spirit is constantly trying to get us to join. It keeps telling us that the way out is if we join. So you're right, you know. And I want to apologize for you because I have been projecting onto everybody in front of me what I think they're thinking. Mm -hmm. And I've been reacting to you according to what I think about you. And I want to apologize if I've ever had any perceptions of you, anybody, that's been unloving. Because what I did was interpreted your motivation and where you were coming from and then reacted to you as if what I was telling myself about you was true. Mm. And I'm going to apologize for, it, for doing that. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, no question coming online. Uh, okay, Cheryl, love, love unconditionally. That's right. Read this, watch. Those of you online, feel free to ask me questions or make comments about what we're talking about. Okay? Um, because that's what I'm here for. I've done 35 years of studying and teaching this, and um, it took me so funny. Do you know that the only purpose of A Course in Miracles is to teach you how to have inner peace? <laughs> and, and it's trying to teach you, says if you have inner peace, then you can hear the voice of God in you, that you can hear your guidance, that you're getting all day, if you have peace. That the purpose of it, it's also the purpose of the course is to give you the correct perception of God, so that we can call on God and let that, that, that let God operate in our lives, so we can have an even a much more peaceful experience. The course in miracles is not about helping people achieve more power, more fame, more specialness, more physical pleasure. That's not its goal. Mm -hmm. But what I've noticed is that the more you do it. It's like the rest of the stuff you want kind of it gets kind of thrown in. It's really weird. It's like all the stuff that people try so hard to achieve the power, fame, money, physical pleasure, when they put the focus on God and the truth and waking up, it's like everything else is added. Which I think is great. So it says love cannot judge. And as it and as it is one itself, love looks on all as one. So would I look at you as being one if I loved you? So the meaning of love lies in its oneness. So the meaning of love must elude the mind that thinks of love as partial or in part. There is no love but God's love. And all of love is God's love. There is no other principle that rules where love is not. Love is a law without an opposite. Love's wholeness is the power of holding everything as one. Love is the link between you and God, which holds you both forever as the same. So to be one means to be the same. When I'm one, if I say I'm one with you, I'm saying I'm the same as you. When you say you're one with God, you're saying you're the same as God. Mm, but I just had a toothache. That seems slightly contradictory. Right? Okay, so either I'm not the same as God, or I'm wrong about what I think I am. Okay? And so, it says, No course whose purpose is to teach you to remember what you really are. So what is the purpose of a course in miracles? To teach you to remember what you really are. The purpose of the course, I, sometimes I think people wonder, why the heck do I even come to this class? I'm coming to this class because I want to remember what I really am. I'm coming to this class because I'm tired of being bothered by stuff all day. One thing after another thing after another thing that I think needs to be different and I'm upset about. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to this class because I don't want to be afraid anymore and I don't ever want to feel alone and I don't want to feel like I'm not really seen or truly appreciated. I want to know my connection to you. I want to go deeper than the superficial relationships that I see around me. I've had enough of them. 
I'm to the point I'd rather be by myself to tell the truth, you know. And, which is a problem, because I could never be by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we just ought to learn how to love each other, because we can't get away from each other no matter how. I, I came back in another body, as another race, and another sex, and y'all still found me. <laughs> I, just, I can't lose, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You were curly red here the last time I saw you. <laughs> that's why you bought here tonight. You don't want to deal with that hat no more. You don't want to go back to the note, but hey. You know, I'm gonna say that's her job. She works on hair. That's what, look what you need. You want those to be her friend. You don't have no hair. <laughs> she works on hair. You know. <laughs> you know. Um, so, so guess what? He says, no course, no course, whose purpose is to teach you to remember what you really are, could fail to emphasize that there can never be a difference between difference in what you really are and what love is. Okay, so what does that mean? That means whatever love is, is what I am. <coughs> so I must not be what I think I am, because I think I can give my love and take it back. I think I can have degrees of love for one person more than another. So I must not be who I think I am. Again, I must not be who I think I am. Says I'm the same as God, then it turns around and says I'm the same as love. Mm. Mm. I got an identity crisis going on right now. <laughs> right? And like online, the subject says, is the definition of love oneness? Yes, the definition of love is oneness, but let's take it to another level and say the definition of love is sameness. Mm. Oh. I'm the same as you. What does that mean? I do the same thing you do. I create my own way of looking at things. I'm the one that's determining how I feel. I'm the one that does the judging. I think, you know what I'm saying? We're the same. We're the same. Okay? Uh, the Course says there can never be peace among the different. It says, love's meaning is your own meaning. And your love, your your meaning is shared by God Himself. But what you are is what God is. There we go again. What you are is what God is. What you are is what love is. There is no love but God's. And what God is is everything there is. So God is everything there is. So another name for God is all that is. Everything that is. Okay. Everything that is. So I'm the same as everything that is. Everything that is is the same as me. I'm the same as everything that is, and everything that is is the same as me. There is no limit placed upon God, so you are unlimited as well. So you are completely free. 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 You ever wonder why no one's ever come to free you? <laughs> wow, isn't that deep? I'm like a prisoner who's been pardoned, sitting in a jail cell with the cell door open, the prison deserted, overgrown with weeds, waiting for someone to come and rescue me. Wow. And rearranging your jail cell isn't the same as making a change in yourself. <laughs> okay? So most people just rearrange what they're already doing. They do the same thing with somebody else. They do the same thing somewhere else. They're rearranging it with the same thoughts they've always had. And you know, I mean, I mean when I was a kid, we used to do that periodically. We rearrange the furniture. And for a second, you actually feel like you're in a brand new room. But actually, it was exactly the same furniture. Right? And then yeah. sometimes we do that in relationships. It'll look like it's another person, but it's exactly the same person. Mm. I've always said to myself, I have one woman, she just takes different bodies. Mm. There's just one man in my life, and he just takes different bodies. Why else would I be having similar experiences with all of them? If they were really different. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. No law the world obeys can help you understand the meaning of love. There's not one rule that people in the world obey that will help you understand what love is. Let me give you 
a perfect definition of a worldly person. A worldly person is a person who thinks their happiness and everything is caused by things outside them. There's nothing to do with money or status. You're a worldly person if you think everything outside of you or something outside of you has to be different in order for you to be happy. I'm not going to be happy unless I have that house. I'm not going to be happy unless I have that car. I'm not going to be happy unless I have that person. That's a worldly person. A spiritual person is a person that believes that everything comes from within them, from inside. So they don't go out when they have a problem. They go in. When I have challenges in the world, that's just a message to me. I need to study more. I need to read more, and I need to meditate more. So I get up early in the morning, and I start focusing on the truth more. When I have challenges in the world, I do that first. Okay? Try and see how it miraculously clears up. Right. Will blow your mind. Uh, he says, and he says, what the world believes was made to hide. I'm doing more paraphrase conversational way. What the world believes was made to hide the meaning of love. So the world tries to keep the meaning of love dark and secret. So this is a place that tries to hide what love means from us. And there is not one principle the world upholds. Every principle the world upholds violates the truth of what love is. Everything the world believes violates love. And violates you. That's, that's intense. You mean I'm in a place where nobody knows what love is, where everyone is trying to hide the meaning of love from each other. Kind of makes sense what's going on when I read the paper now. All of a sudden, any questions, any comments, any realizations, any ahas about what I've covered so far? Sometimes I get confused about when you say God is everything, but then God didn't create the world. So, tell me if this is correct. Mm -hmm. um, if, if God didn't create the world, but God is everything, then the world not, must not be anything, basically. It's not real. It's exactly right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another way to look at the world is, what does the Course in Miracles, what is one of the Course in Miracles definition of the world? Okay. It says, it's de it's definition, one of the definitions of the world is that the world is a false perception based on fear. So when you say God didn't make the world, another way to look at it is God didn't make your false perceptions based on fear. See, that makes a lot more sense, right? So, so the Course in Miracles, see, the Course in Miracles is saying that we're feeling guilty about nothing because there's nothing that the world believes that's based on anything that's real love anyway. So when you, when you, know what a, you know what a happy person is doing? They're violating the laws of guilt. <laughs> in other words, anything that makes me feel guilty, I know is not true. Because nothing true would make me feel guilty because truth is love, and love would never make you feel guilty. So what does that mean, girl? You never feel guilty in a relationship with somebody you really love. You would never feel guilty in a relationship with somebody you really love, no matter what you did with them. If you were really in love with that married man, you would feel guilty about it. Now, you may look at it in such a way that you think you're making some kind of an error that needs to be corrected, that you may not be using for your own best interest, because at some point you may ask yourself, you know, something like, Am I really loving myself to be in love with somebody that's not available to me in the way I think I would like to have them available to me? You see, you see what I'm saying? If love would make you ask, your, maybe ask yourself some questions, but guess what? If I love you, I never would have to be with you physically anyway. If I love you, I would never have to do anything with you physically. But physically can be one way I let love come through me, but physically would not be necessary for me to love you deep. So if I'm feeling guilty about something, I know I'm listening to my ego. So I need to ask for another way to look at it because nothing from God would ever make me feel guilty. No answer from love would ever make me feel guilty. It may guide me. It may instruct me. It may get me to do something different from the way I've been doing. But one thing for sure, if I'm listening to God, I won't feel guilty. 
and I won't become more and more afraid. So any voice that's making you more and more afraid is never the voice of love and is never the voice of God. Now it might make your ego afraid because your ego is going to lose all its power if you listen to love. <clears throat> any questions, any comments? Let it never be said that I don't give people a chance in the class to get some clarity or to share. I thought it was interesting that you said that. Saying that you're one with God is the same as being the same as God. Mm -hmm. Usually when I think of being one with God, I think of being a part of God, but not, mm -hmm. not God. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like a drop of ocean water is the same as the ocean, but it's not the whole ocean. So God is greater than us, even though we're the same. We're made out of the same juice, you know what I'm saying? So what you call your individual life is, is, is analogous to smacking your hand in some water watching the drops come up in the air for a minute and then going back down into the water. And that little, that little moment where the drops splash, they all look like separate drops, <laughs> right? And so you can say each one of those was a separate person in a separate life. Hmm. And then eventually you, you, come, you become part of the one again. That's what, right now you're blowing it. You're, you know, you, you, you're a drop that's blowing it. <laughs> okay, why you're going through that illusion of being separate and if you're not letting yourself enjoy it, and do it with gusto and love and freedom, you waste in the time that it looks like you're a separate drop coming out of the ocean before it goes back in. The best advisor that I have that makes me live my life in a more present way is death. <laughs> death is an incredible advisor. Death is not our enemy, that idea of death. Now we're talking about the death of the body, not the death of you. But the way you are right now, this being that's in the, this is it for you. You know, you get a, one chance to play the role of Susan. You know what I mean? But who you are lives on. You know, it's like doing a play in high school or something. You know, you do the play, you do it one night, but you got a whole big old life that's outside of the play. And you probably didn't do the play no more but the one time. <laughs> but you went on to other plays. So don't waste this play that you're in with guilt and fear and anger and playing the victim. Wow. Um, so, mm -hmm, go ahead. So, um, when you were saying about like, like if, if you love someone, you know, then, and then you don't have to be physical with them. Mm -hmm. And so then... It runs people away so that you say something like that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So then, yeah, if you love someone, then yeah, you, you don't, you don't need that physical. I mean, that's one way to express it, but you don't need that. And so then when you feel that lack, when you don't have that, then that's not love. Right. Right, that's fear. <laughs> you know, if, if I'm feeling any form of lack, that's fear. If I feel any form of lack in any kind of way, that's the definition of fear. Fear is lack. So as soon as a person feels fear, they know they think something is missing. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. But, but while our vision is still so dim and we don't recognize the truth the way that we should, then it can look like love is being expressed from one body to another. Okay? In other words, Chris, you don't, you don't realize you're more than a body and I don't realize I'm more than a body. So I don't realize that our love is already real and we're both conscious of it. So what I'm going to do is say, Chris, I love you, brother. See, that's using my body to express love to your body. And you do so. So at the level that we're on, the way we become aware of love is how much of it we allow to come through our bodies. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So I appreciate you is letting you know I love you because you're not at the point you recognize me beyond my body and I don't recognize you. So I can be loving you in my mind all day long. You won't know it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but I love you in my mind. Well, you know, hey, <laughs> I want some chocolates. <laughs> now I know you love me. <laughs> Think about us. Now I know your wife. You give me some chocolates. <laughs> now, oh, look the fact that I lived in the hospital with you for two months. <laughs> you didn't, I didn't give you no chocolate. <laughs> so I'm doomed. Oh, I'm telling you. We, we so we, we're cute. We so crazy. We're so crazy. We still want chocolate. No, 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 see, that's what I'm talking about. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. 
And so uh, online, uh, the Bible says, any voice that you hear that makes you afraid is not the voice for God. God's voice is whatever makes you feel safe and loved and with no fear, rather it's perfect freedom. So don't let us waste this play, my beloveds. Let us feature in each other's play so that we can leave the play to go to the real stuff. <laughs> Laugh <Life> out loud. <laughs> I, that is the truth. That is the total truth. I want somebody to really play with. I need some. I want some playmates. Okay, I'm sending out to the universe. I want some real playmates. I want a phone to playmates. I want a play, playmates to telling me that I have to play the way they want me to play in order for them to play be my playmate. I don't, I don't want none of them. I'm asking for real playmates, and real playmates are encouraging me to do with the thing that gives me joy. And I'm encouraging them to do the same thing, and then we can join in the enjoyment of what each one of us wants to do. I'm trying to get rid of the part of me that has an agenda for all of you in order to make me happy. And I'm damn sure trying to get rid of the people who have that attitude toward me. Because they're, they're drag. Somebody that's constantly needing you to be other than how you are so that they can feel good about themselves. Always telling you what you need to do so that you can make them happy. You don't have to, somebody that loves you, they're going to do whatever they can to present love and happiness to you, and you won't have to ask them to do it. <laughs> they naturally want your happiness. You won't have to tell them to want my happiness. But I don't know what love means. I don't know what love means. And they don't either. <laughs> don't forget that now, but you get into grievances. <laughs> Right? He says, don't seek inside the world to find yourself. Now see, I blew it right there. Right? But then he says, love is not found in darkness and in death. Love isn't found where people die. What? Love is not located where people die. And, <laughs> this book is such a trip. He said, yet it is perfectly apparent to the eyes that see and ears that hear love's voice Love is perfectly obvious. So today we practice making free your mind of all the laws you think you must obey. So right, right now, we're going to practice freeing ourselves from all the rules that we think we must obey based on what the world taught us. Today we're going to practice freeing ourselves of all the limits that we think we live on under. Today we're going to free ourselves from all the changes we think are part of human destiny. Okay, so what does that mean? It means to me that I'm going to just for a minute believe that I, I am not limited by the same things that humans are limited by. We're going to pretend that we are not limited human beings that die. We're going to practice for just a minute thinking that you're not just a limited human being that dies. The challenge with teaching that we're more than limited human beings that die is this. If you think you are a limited human being that dies, and I tell you you're more than a limited human being that dies, then what I'm saying to you doesn't have any real relevance. So it's hard for me to listen to it and it's hard for me to stay tuned in because I think I am a slave to human destiny. And you're talking about something I don't know about. So it makes sense that I'd have a hard time tuning in. And it says, <clears throat> today we take the largest single step this course requests. You're doing the biggest step that the Course in Miracles requires of you in this class today, right now. You're taking the biggest step that you can take in the Course in Miracles, right now. What is that? Well, if you achieve the faintest glimmering of what love really means today, what, what is that? If you can achieve the faintest glimmering of what love means today, you have advanced in distance without measure and in time beyond the count of years to your release. So if we were to get just the slightest idea of what love really is today, we would advance more than we could even measure. You couldn't come up with how much you've advanced today. And he says you couldn't even imagine how much time you would save if you walked out of here today 
and you said, well, wait a minute now, if somebody really loved me, if it's real love, then it's not a different kind of love, and it's not a kind for that and the way of loving another. It has no degrees, no kinds, no levels. If I can walk out of here today realizing that the person that really loves me could never not love me, and the person that really loves me, their love for me could never change, and if a person really loved me, their love could never end, and if a person really loved me, they absolutely would never judge me or attack me or leave me or abandon me within their being then I have advanced more toward my happiness today than I can even measure because now I know when someone is loving me and when they're not. And not knowing that is what I've been doing to hurt myself. You follow what I'm saying here? So I can let go of all those people in my past that it looks like their love for me changed because they never did love me in the first place. There never was real love in the first place. If it can change, it never was real love in the first place. If it can change, you can never lose real love. So if I can, if I'm willing to, to really believe that, even though I don't always understand it, then I've advanced further in the course of miracles than I can even measure. And I've saved more time where I'm not going through pain in relationships than I could even imagine. And i tell you something else. If I know a person is not expressing an unchanging love for me, then I'm not going to invest in the idea that that person really loves me. So if they change their mind and do something else or go something where else, I have no grievance and I have no pain. Because mm -hmm. you're not going to hurt me when I never think you love me in the first place. So now I know what love looks like, so I know when a person is come giving love and when I'm giving love. And so therefore, if I see the love isn't real love based on what this is saying, a love that doesn't change, and I don't even go in the place where I think they're loving me to the point I'd have these expectations that they always will. So no matter what they do, they wouldn't hurt me. If you were to get that, you'd save yourself so much pain and so much time that you couldn't even measure it. Wow. As soon as you get past the depression, depression to realize nobody has ever loved you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but, it's not the same as saying that you are not always loved. See, God loves yeah, me. My creator loves me. What does my creator? All that is. Suppose your core belief was, all that is loves me. If, that was your, if everything in the physical world is a reflection of your perceptions and beliefs, which it is, and suppose you had the belief that all that is loved you, then you would start to see all that is love you. God is all that is. God is all that is. You had your hand up, brother. You know, you're talking about self-love. I mean, pure self-love. Pure, yes, pure self-love. We're the, we're the source of everything. And from there, and you've told us many times, how we perceive this begins with us. It's our belief systems of this and that. So we're not loving to our core, which is our self, and have grievances, judgments, uh, likes, dislikes about our core. How can we see the world any other way except for extending those judgments, grievances, guilt, and shame? You know, that's, and that's a good point, because you could read that second paragraph and you could go, um, do I think I can love myself at times and hate myself at other times? Do I think I can bestow love on me and then not bestow love on me at other times? Do I think I can give me love and then withhold love from me? To believe these things is not to understand what love is. So the same attitude that it's talking about is not real love. If I was to be honest with myself, that's the attitude I take toward me. So I'm not even loving me, so I should also give me a break, too. Okay? So, I like that. See, I don't know about you. Now, if you're hearing this correctly, it should be freeing you. If you're not hearing it correctly, then it's depressing you. Okay? This depends on whether or not you're hearing what I'm saying. Because you can't ever again claim that anybody's fooling you about whether or not they love you <coughs> and whether or not they say they love you. Their actions will show you if they love you, and now you know what their actions are supposed to look like. Uh, I don't believe anybody who says they really love me if they don't love nobody else. See, I used to think I wanted to be the only one you loved and the main one you loved more than anybody else. Now I believe anybody who loves me to the exclusion of everybody else doesn't love me. So the thing that would have turned me on in the past now scares the hell out of me. Oh, you mean I'm the only one you love? 
Sounds like a lot of work to me. <laughs> Sounds like you're going to be a tad possessive and clean. And I am the only thing you look. And I remember when I was so insane, that's what I wanted to hear. And I would get upset with somebody if I even thought for a second they loved somebody else more than they loved me. I can't tell you how many times I've said to people, I love you, I think you're beautiful, I think you're wonderful, and it's all you said it to everybody. I said, that's why you can believe me. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I do say that to everybody I possibly can. I mean it. So as soon as I hear you the only one I love, oh God, another situation where the person don't love me. <laughs> See, the ones you know the truth, people will say stuff to you that they think should be impressing you. But the truth is, because you know the truth, they're revealing that they don't know the truth and you can hurt yourself through them. But your ego might go, oh my God, I'm it? I am the one? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they'll someday tell you about all the other people that were the one. And they call it their past lovers, past mates, and past partners. So you know your the one could make you the past. Because <laughs> you're hearing about the past. But the ego is so crafty, go, but I'm different. Now the other people, he didn't really mean it, but me, he really means it. She really means it. It's so funny. It's like, who are the people I see the least? The ones who told me they love me the most throughout my life. I've been on the planet long enough to see that. The people that are not around are the ones who treated me the most special. And the people who I have the longest relationships with were the ones that didn't. Make me the special one. Mm -hmm. Just check out your own life and you'll see that that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. But I get it. The specialness is so good when it's right there in this most illusionary stage. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels so good when you're saying all that stuff to yourself that people don't know what the meaning of love is, say to each other, to keep each other hurt. So of course I want to go unconscious, doggone it. This is everything that's the opposite to what I want to believe is true because I'm looking for them now. They're going to show up. Who is your soulmate? Everybody in front of your face is your soulmate. Because every one of them give you an opportunity to remember what love really is. And that's what your soulmate's going to do. They're going to remind you of the truth. Oh, God. Um. <laughs> uh, anybody want to say anything? <laughs> yes, my brother. You mentioned that. Because uh, this is some good stuff. I mean, y'all have no thoughts about this. What's up with y'all? Come on, now. You mentioned that uh, you know God is everything. Yeah. Like, everything loves us. Yes. I ran into a guy who uh, he was telling me he was losing his place to live, and mm -hmm. he had the most casual attitude about it. He told me what he was paying for rent. I couldn't believe it. He's like, yeah, but I got to move out of there. You know, he was separating from his partner. And he had to get out. You probably told him she loved him forever. <laughs> <laughs> but get out. <laughs> yeah, the attitude about it. Like, oh, everything's going to be just fine. And I was like, I like your attitude. Why are you, why are you so casual yeah. about it? He's like, I don't know. The world, the universe just has a way of taking care of me. Like, that's, really that's, right. that's right, that's right. See, that's what I'm saying. So he had the correct perception of having to be evicted or leave his apartment. See, that's how you can always tell whether you got the right perception of something. It's that simple. If I got the right perception of it, I'm not afraid. If I have the wrong perception of it, I am. It's just that simple. So it then goes on and tells us if you achieve the faintest glimmering of what love means today, you have advanced in distance without measure and in time beyond the count of years to your release. Let us together then be glad to give some time to God today. And guess what? I understand there's no better use for time than giving your time to the truth. There, according to this, there is no better use of time than what we're doing right now. There is nothing better that you can do with your time than what we are doing right now, to use this time to recognize what love it really is and who we are. There's nothing you can do the rest of the day that would be a better use of time unless you're using the rest of the day to also remember the truth and remember who you really are. That's the best use of time. Wow. Wow, so it says, uh, for 15 minutes twice a day. Oh God, a whole 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that is too much time to give for infinite happiness. <laughs> you know, I, I watch a baseball game four hours. <laughs> what you watching? I'm watching people throw this little round object and people try to hit it with a bat. <laughs> so what's the value of it? The joy you get out of it? The joy you give yourself out of the baseball game is the value of the baseball game. That's why you shouldn't ever try to do anything you don't really want to. It's a waste of your time. Because you won't be giving yourself joy through it. Mm. So you know what's really cool? Get to the point that you get so much joy in solitude with being with yourself that you, everything else is just gravy. Because you already feel so good because you give you joy. Mm -hmm. And you with you all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, all day long, you start, oh, I just love you. <laughs> God. Everywhere I go, you are there. <laughs> God, wow. <laughs> Even in the bathtub, everywhere. <laughs> when you don't love yourself, the last thing you want to be is alone. You can't stand being by yourself. Unless you love yourself, you are a relationship junkie. Mm -hmm. You got to have this body validating you in some kind of way. Mm -hmm. If you love yourself, it's nice if you have a partner, it's nice if you don't. <laughs> it's, it's so cool with you. It's good to go to the movie with somebody, it's so good to go to the movie by myself. Remember when I was at the movie one time by myself? And I wanted a hot dog, and then somebody went to the hot dog stand and just bought me a hot dog and handed it to me without me asking for it. So even when I'm by myself, I even get hot dogs. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? God is real. <laughs> Partner Red Sea, that's nothing. A hot dog in a movie theater, expensive as they are, being given to you by a stranger. That's a miracle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all know what these hot dogs cost? It cost them five cents to make that popcorn. They charge you seven dollars a bucket for Five cents, they say. <laughs> but if you look at all that you give, you're giving it to yourself, and you're being generous, and thinking about all the employees at the movie theater that's going to be able to feed their families and take care of themselves and pay their bills because you are paying $7 for an overpriced box of popcorn, you feel good about yourself, and you don't mind giving it to them because you know you're giving it to yourself. Mm -hmm. See, the, you know, see what I'm saying? There's always another way to look at something that you can feel better about it and not attack yourself through it if you take the minute to do it. Take a minute to do it. So he's saying right here, what's the best use of time? But y'all answer me in enthusiasm. <laughs> what's the best use of time? <laughs> I'm not making fun of nobody. It's just, we gotta start laughing at ourselves, y'all. We're, We're funny. What's the best use of time? Studying the truth. Studying the truth. Focusing on the truth. This is the best use of time. You use the time to get rid of all your problems and all your perception of problems. What could be a better use of time? So the last paragraph I'm gonna cover is this one, and it says, for 15 minutes twice a day, escape mm -hmm. from every law in which you now believe. For 15 minutes, let go of what you believe that causes you any kind of fear, right? Do what? Open your mind and rest. The world that seems to hold you prisoner can be escaped by anyone who doesn't hold it dear. You can, you can escape from anything that you don't hold dear to you. Because anything that you don't hold dear to you is guaranteed to leave. It's a law of the universe. That's why if you don't appreciate somebody and you're in a relationship and you don't appreciate, sooner or later they're going to be gone. Because anything you don't hold dear is going to disappear. Anything you don't hold dear is going to disappear. So, therefore, all I have to do, bless my heart, is not hold the false perceptions of separation and the kind of love that the world gives dear. And that kind of love will lead. The kind of love that changes is not dependable. It's given sometimes and taken back sometimes. And do you know that what that really means is what I've been calling love is what? Specialness. <coughs> I say this over and over and over again in the class. 
Why do I talk about specialness over and over and over again in the class? Because it's the chief weapon that people use to keep themselves miserable. That's right. And the Course of Miracles is trying to get us out of misery. Now, don't be fooled by the specialness that seems like it's working. <laughs> because the special, see, when, when somebody just had a big breakup and their heart's broken and they feel like they deceive themselves and they walk into this room, they're hanging on every word I say. When I say anything about specialness and how it's not the pillow, they go, You're right, brother. <laughs> You're right that you can't depend on specialness, it's not real. But Lord help those who right now, it looks like they're getting the specialness and the person is saying, you're everything but else, there's nobody but you, you're going to be everything that I'm looking at, I do to please you, whatever I can do. Then they go, I don't, I don't like this class. <laughs> I don't like, see, don't, see, the course says, we don't want our illusions and our deceptions broken. We don't, we want to keep, we want to stay in the fantasy as long as we possibly can. So somebody who tells you the thing you think is so real isn't real based on the definition that it is real it can never change, I don't want to hear that. Because I do want to believe I'm the only one that you love. I do want to believe I'm the most important thing in the world to you. I do want to believe that you'll never withdraw your love from me no matter what I do. And that you'll always love me no matter what. And especially just me. <laughs> right? So if I go into a class and they say, that's the opposite of love, I'm sorry, that means love's being and it's hidden. You don't have the slightest idea what love is. Love is nothing like that. I don't want to hear it. Because nothing will scare me more than to see that person's love be inclusive and include more people than me. So I still want to hurt. Don't you interfere with my pain. <laughs> and I'm saying, you deserve to. I love you, and I want her to love you, and I want him to love you, and I want him to love you, and I want her. I want you to get as much love from as many people as you can, because the more love you have from the more people, the more any one person can hurt you. Because if they don't treat you right, you know there's somebody else that will. So you better hope and pray and be open to as many people loving you as possibly can. And you want to hope and pray that for the other person, too, because they'll be less afraid and less possessive and less jealous, too. Then both of y'all will win. There's no reason to leave somebody that doesn't give you a reason to. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so the lure that holds you prisoner can be escaped by anyone who doesn't hold it dear. Withdraw all value you have placed upon the world's what kind of offerings? Meager offerings. And what kind of gifts? Senseless gifts. And do what? Let the gift of God replace them all. Acknowledge yourself. Oh, the spirit of the hand here and the single greatest advancement that you could possibly give yourself. So I got a prayer that this, this book ends with this awesome that we're going to complete with today. So let's do the financial expression of appreciation. I'm going to do a quick little recap. Hey, y'all, thank you so much. For being willing to hear what I call a little hardcore, straight up out of the little coolers. Thank you. Yeah. Was that cool? Yeah. Is that, is that going to be something that you're going to give some thought to the next time somebody tell you they love you more than anything else and anybody else forever? <laughs> now your ego is going to love it. Your ego is going to eat it up. So what do you do? You keep on telling each other the truth. I appreciate you. 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 I love you means I appreciate you. Of course, the miracle says love means appreciation. So I love you. I appreciate 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 you. So, after all these things, send me a bunch of hearts online. Just, oh, you better just send those hearts to me. <laughs> I better be your favorite teacher of all time. <laughs> you are early until you say something I don't like. <laughs> and you will never see me again. Okay. So, I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions. If you want to make a financial expression of appreciation, if your heart moves you to do that, I really appreciate it as a full-time teacher. Go to earlpurdy.com. And also, I'm giving some incredible one-on-one -on -one sessions with people. If you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me to get past some blocks, then go to my website, and it explains everything that I'm doing, including mentoring and coaching, and that's been fun, too. There, uh, there's so many blessings. Tuesday at 7 o'clock Mountain Time is the Way of Mastery online. 
And also on Thursday is a course of love online at 7 o'clock Mountain Time that you can watch, as well as our course in Miracles Live class that we're doing right now. Melissa, I appreciate you. Jamola, I appreciate you. Myrna, I appreciate you. Thank you. Rita, I love and appreciate all of you. I said that beautiful. We're being told everybody loves and appreciates. You got people that love you that you don't even see. Have you ever looked at somebody on TV that you really admired and loved? And you shooting out all that love and you aware of them? Have you ever thought about they don't have the slightest idea you even exist? <laughs> Think about that you're loving them. They have no idea you even exist. That's what's happening to you right now. You being loved by people that you have no idea even exist. They're watching you. Just like you're watching the person on TV. Mm. They're sending out, our invisible brothers and sisters are sending out love to us, just like you're sending out love to the person on TV. And you don't even know it. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So feel the invisible love. Feel the invisible love. Woo! Can you feel it? Yeah. Feel the invisible love. I'm pretty good at invisible love. Love I can see. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the prayer. I bless you with the love of God, which I would share with you. For I would learn the joyous lesson that there is no love but God's and yours and mine and everyone's. I'll say it one more time. I bless you with the love of God which I would share with you. For I would learn the joyous lesson that there is no love but God. Say that with me. There is no love but God. 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 I bless you with the love of God. I say I bless you with the love. Would you look at somebody and go, I bless you with the love of God. I bless you with the love of God. I say I bless you with the love online, I say I bless you with the love of God. I bless you with the love of God. I look around, bless you, find somebody with the love of God. I say I bless you with the love of God. I bless you. With the love of God. Let's give it up, my dear friend. Now you know. Now you heard from the news that I was talking about fake news, fake news, fake news. Now you know how to recognize fake love. Right. See y'all next time. Hugs are available. You do juicy beans. Love you online. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>